take. So I'll just tell you a small story for having this presentation before me. My son, my 10 year old son, was asking me, why are you traveling that distance from Egypt to Canada and taking two flights for just a presentation? So I told him that, and this is what I really believe, we have a mission, which is to spread knowledge, especially when it is something that is good for the coming generations. So for my kids and your kids, I'm dedicating this presentation. So what's the story? Why am I dedicating? Because you are studying the behavior of hybrid wood soil structure system, HWS, to resist lateral heat. <coughs> so what is the need for this? Why do we need it? First, because our industry is the most polluting industry globally. 40% of the carbon emissions are done through us. Okay? Specifically through the misuse of reinforced concrete in applications that you don't actually need reinforced concrete. What is more unfortunate is that one billion people all over the globe have improper shelter. They are living in improper conditions, below acceptable human standards according to the United Nations. So this is mainly due to the high cost of the construction materials in developing nations. So, what's the solution? One of the solutions is wood. Wood is very cost effective in certain situations depending on the type and the source of the timber and the structural system you are in. And especially if the wood is locally available, if it is from a farm source that's nearby, this would be much, much more efficient and much, much more cost efficient than imported. Also, earth construction is an excellent option in terms of cost effectiveness and eco friendliness. So you are actually hitting two birds with one stone. How about having these two stones together as one stone in, sorry, in a hybrid wood soil system? So this is the concept of a hybrid wood soil system. You have wood is the, actually the skeleton, the structural load bearing element. And the soil is not designed, the soil mixture is not designed to carry any load. It's just an infill and a plastic plate that is there to protect the wooden members um, and perform thermal insulation, acoustic insulation, and fire protection. However, does it really does that only? Does it actually have no contribution to the load bearing part? Does it actually carry no loads? This is the question that we are asking here. Okay? So when you look at this by the way, you will not even imagine that this is soil and wood. When I show this picture to people, they don't believe. Okay? This is by the way, when talking about the coming generations, this is a low cost um, kindergarten and the Siwa Oasis in Egypt. Okay? So uh, this is funded by the government, and we chose the hybrid wood soil system to be used there in order to decrease the cost from the taxpayer money. So to brief you, the first step is you have a foundation system. Then you'll have the uh, wood, wooden skeleton. Then after that, you start having sheathing, uh, inner and outer sheathing, and you start pouring your infill soil in between and then you will plaster it at inner and outer plastering until you have of course you will have to construct your domes and walls in this case we have all the domes and walls maybe you could have uh, any structure system on the top it's not an issue so this is the end goal so what we have done in our work is that we first designed 
uh, uh, we received architectural design. Uh, it was full of domes and and and, uh, and uh, vaults because the architect uh, was highly affected by uh, the Nubian architecture. So uh, uh, then after that we started uh, doing the structural design according to the OE6. Why according to the OE6? Because in Egypt, unfortunately, we don't have any standards for wood design until this moment. Okay, so because uh, I'm an Egyptian Canadian, I'm doing the OE6. Okay, that's the newest thing I do. So uh, then, according to the issue or the, the major issue we had was the location of the building. Because that area, Siwa, is an open terrain area. It's um, it's at a location where the wind speed is about 42 meter, uh, meter per second. Okay, it's the highest wind speed in Asia. So the governing load case, and the roof is not accessible. So the light load of the roof is, is not large at all, compared to the wind load, which is significantly larger. So the most critical load case was the wind load. Okay. So. Then we had a scaled model, okay, of one load. To answer one question, which is, is the assumption that the soy mixture is carrying nothing, is it a valid assumption or not? If for sure it's conservative assumption. But is it over conservative? Let's see. So we did it twice, I mean, we, 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 we had this uh, uh, tested once, without having any soil infill. And then we repeated the same exercise with the infill sample, with another sample. So we had two identical samples. One is not infilled and the other is infilled. So what you can see here, so what you can see here, the, the yellow thing over there, this is the actuator. So it's applying a lateral load, okay? So we have three LEDs to assemble parallel to the load direction, and the third is perpendicular to it to test the effect of any twist that we have. Because you can see here something that the structure is not perfectly symmetric. It looks symmetric, but when you look at it from a structural point of view, it's not perfectly symmetric because you have window openings and door openings at two perpendicular sides. So you can have a loss of symmetry when evaluating this under lateral loading, you could have a little bit of a twist. So, the second sample, this is how it looked like after the infill layer and after plastering. So let's look at the results. Wow, that was a real surprise, but a good surprise for us, which is that the infill sample was carrying a load, a load significantly higher than the non infill one. The soil that we just what is soil? Soil is nothing. But no, it's something of value. It turned to be of a very high value. It carried a load, I mean the infill sample carried a load 35% more than that was stood by the non infill. In addition to being having a larger plastic deformation, so it's more tight. Actually, it's tougher. If you calculate the area under each curve, you'll find that it absorbed more energy until it failed. This is something of a really high value because we underestimated this, we neglected this at the design stage, we said, okay, it's carrying nothing. Let's just build our calculations on the wood. So, of course, I mean, you can see that the, the lateral drift is nearly double. So, so this is something of a, that we even appear when you look at the samples. And this is the, how the sample behaved during testing, when it's called crack. That was at the end stage. It didn't actually fail. What we had is that this is not um, a catastrophic failure or a full failure. This is a merit because that means that if I have a storm, if I have something, this will not kill the people inside the place. The people are still alive. The kids in the kindergarten are still alive. Okay? Yes, it needs renovation, for sure it needs renovation. It needs repair, yes, it needs repair, but it didn't actually fail, okay? 
actually, if we go and compare what the two specimens carry compared to the uh, 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 design wind pressure, we, they both exceeded, however, the infill exceeded more. So our conclusions, that infill soil together with the plastering layer significantly increases the ductility and significantly increases the strength and the infill soil layer together with the plastering increases the toughness and for sure we need to re-examine this assumption of neglecting the strength of that soil because it is of significant strength. Thank you. Thank you for the question.